here in Victory Lane at Darlington Raceway, and he just shocked the world. He's in the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs. Chase Briscoe, you put on a clinic tonight. You showed him how it was done, but you broke a 93 race winless streak to get into the playoffs. How'd you do it? I'm glad it was under 100. <laughs> I knew it was close. Uh, yeah, you know, our car was really, really good from the get-go. I knew in the first 30, 40 laps, I was going to have a chance to, to be at least in the mix for this race. I told my picker guys, literally, it was probably like lap 60 or so, I said, look, guys, if we do everything right, like we have a realistic chance to, to win this race. And my car was good. I felt like I was better than Kyle, and I would catch him, and then I would just kind of fall off. So I knew if I could ever get the lead, I'd be probably – hard to pass I felt like um, and then obviously was able to have a, a really good restart get the lead and then obviously Kyle here comes him on new tires and felt like uh, the 2020 Xfinity race literally all over again he was running me down so yeah just uh, unbelievable feeling you know to you know have one bullet literally left in the chamber and to, to go and kind of shock the world and uh, yeah just to be able to race for a championship the final year Stuart Haas racing is an uh, unbelievable feeling so yeah, pretty, uh, pretty amazing day. You told your team that you were going to give it all you could give tonight to make them into the playoffs, and there's 323 Stuart Haas Racing employees that will not have a job next season. How much does this mean not only you but to Stuart Haas as an organization? Yeah, it means a ton, right, to, to be able to have a chance your very last season in existence to, to win a championship is something really cool. And, and just from a team morale and even just keeping people, right, like if we're not in the playoffs – a lot of guys will probably start leaving and things like that. So, yeah, you know, truthfully, last week was the worst race I've ever raced in my entire career. It was ridiculous, and I stood on pit road at Daytona after, and I've never been more mad in my life. I didn't talk to any of the team guys, and I texted Richard right after, and I said, I don't ever want to talk about this race again. I don't want to talk about it this week, and I promise I'll uh, make it up to you this week. And he came out there uh, on the first race. He said, man, I didn't know you guys turn it on and off like that. <laughs> so, yeah, just uh, a huge, you know, win for us as a team, and, to get this 14 car back in victory lane is uh, just special. Finally, he's being congratulated here in victory lane, but finally they moved the trophy behind us, not to be discounted, Chase. You're a Southern 500 winner. You want a crown jewel in the sport of the NASCAR Cup Series. How does it feel? It's uh, not hit me. Um, I started literally bawling my eyes out after the checkered. Uh, and then when I did the victory lap, you know, like nobody left. Like everybody stood there and saluted me. And when you grow up, Wanting to race in NASCAR, the races you dream of getting just a race in are the Daytona 500, the Brickyard 400, and the Southern 500. And this trophy has so many Hall of Famers, so many legends of our sport, and my picture is always going to be on it, even if I never win another race. So just to, uh, you know, win here at a place where the drivers take a lot of pride, it's, uh, it's special. Well, officially, welcome to the playoffs. Thank you. Appreciate it.